Because we used to live in, in perhaps ignorance of other groups. We lived in villages and tribes and small communities, and we didn't have contact with people who were that different from us. But now we do. Uh, on a daily basis, we encounter people who are different from us and may have different beliefs than we do. And the internet, um, the media, exposes us all the time to new ideas. And in a way, we're astonished by how different we are from other people. And we start to realize there's other groups out there. So it's, that's a good thing in, in the long run because we used to be living in ignorance of other people and the great diversity of people and the value of all people. And so now we're becoming much more aware of other people. But at the same time, um, it's maybe frightening is the wrong word for it, but it creates tensions between people. And, and if you get to the place where you feel as though resources aren't sufficient to meet our group's needs, we wonder if perhaps we shouldn't share those resources with other groups. Uh, if we're in a place where, for example, in the United States, where we just went through a process that was very collective, selecting the next president, uh, that's the opportunity for us to, to share our collective views and how much we agree on things, but it's also the chance for divisiveness. And that's what happened in this last presidential election, as two groups emerged, they were very divisive, uh, it increased the gap between people, and that gap seems to be widening, and it's because of our basic nature. The three horsemen of intergroup conflict would be prejudice, stereotyping, and discrimination. And if you, you think about those in the big scheme of things, so prejudice is that negative antipathy towards someone simply based on their group membership. Stereotyping is the cognitive side. It's the thoughts that sometimes jump unbidden into your head when you encounter another person who's a member of another group or even your group, um, and you tend to judge them on the basis of stereotypes, expectations you have about the members of those groups. And discrimination is negative behavioral tendencies. You, it's when individuals treat other people differently based on their group memberships. So they all combine during intergroup conflict. When groups come into tension, conflict with each other, there's a tendency for the individual members to display all three of these processes. The, the positive thing about that is, is since it's a three-component process, one of the cures is to disable the components. And sometimes doing that one at a time is a good thing. We've done a lot of work on prejudice and discrimination. Uh, we, we have an idea of ways to reduce it. We think we know what the causes are. It's complicated, but it, those causes, if identified, suggest solutions as well. Let me just mention a few. Um, the one I've already touched on was the idea that we can control our stereotype thinking. So if we think of each one of us as individuals responsible for this task, to become less prejudiced, to have a, a more positive society where everyone's accepted, not just tolerated, but accepted and appreciated. And each one of us has that goal. More direct one is social learning. You know, that we, we should never model negative behaviors, discrimination against others, and, and prejudice, is, prejudice is taught. So where do the children become prejudiced? They're, they're often, well, they're not very prejudiced when they're young. Um, they don't discriminate rapidly, quickly, against people who aren't like them. But if your parents were prejudiced and taught you to reject out-group members, and they said don't trust people that don't share your social values, well, you're teaching them to be prejudiced as well. So um, parental authorities, teachers, anyone in a position of authority is responsible for modeling pro-social, non-discriminatory behavior, which gets us to the, the third possibility, which is our leaders. Um, so leaders have a special responsibility to not model prejudice and bias. Uh, everybody's influential, you know, I, I influence a certain people, a small group of people, you influence a small group of people. But leaders, uh, national leaders, um, they have special responsibilities. 
and they should not model discriminatory behaviors. They should not stress the difference between people and groups and outgroups. They shouldn't stress that uh, it's okay to rely on stereotypes to judge other people. Uh, and they shouldn't even openly express prejudice, bias, preference for one group over another.